Glory to God. I sense the presence of the Lord in the house. Come on, let's give us a praise. Oh my God. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I sense weight in the house. Come on and shake yourself. Loose yourself. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank God for being in the house this evening and thank God for my brother. I always have to give him that African love. Hug. <laughs> Hallelujah. He pulled a fast one on me last time and I said I was going to pick. I said, brother. He said, I had to get rid of it. <laughs> I said, I thank God. <laughs> I love you, brother Kevin and sister Peggy. It's just an honor to be in the, in the presence of the Lord and in your presence uh, this evening to honor you. It is an honor to be honoring you because actually, um, truth be told, I'm, I think I'm chronologically older than he is. <laughs> but spiritually, he's older than I am. Um, kind of can say that he actually prayed me through. Um, had some bouts and it's so funny how God does a thing when we think out we're in our little secret coven and all of that, I never forget one day after I had received my calling. Brother Kevin came to the front door at 2208 25th Street, said I wasn't going to tell nobody. <laughs> I had heard the voice of the Lord, and I tell you, I was a messed up sister. He came to the door uninvited by me, and all of his teeth in the front would just show it as if he was the cat that swallowed the canary. <laughs> yes, they were. You know I'm going to tell you. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. But there was something in his face that said that God had sent him to my door. Because I said I wasn't going to breathe to a soul what I had just encountered. I was the odd one at the, at the lighthouse at that time. I was the, I can't say the new kid on the block and not, none of that kind of stuff, but I was, all, I was one of the oddballs. But when Brother Kevin started talking, he said, <laughs> He said, I see something. You know how he talks. And we sat there, and the Lord confirmed every word he had told me. I would never forget it as long as I live. And it seems like that was, the, that was the incident of my life and my turning that kind of bonded us. A lot of things have happened. A lot of water has run under the bridge. A lot of episodes of life itself. I mean, you know, we have life episodes. Yeah, man. Yeah. And, and, and one thing about it, when I, when I get in a funk, I mean, I hope you all don't fall apart by me using that word because that's not a cuss word. But I get in a funk. Young folk, what is a funk? When I get in a bad place, that's a funk. See, that's not what you think it is. Kevin is always there. I could call him, and, 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 and it was the understood of the understanding. Is that making sense? Didn't really, couldn't really explain it, but it was like there was an understanding. And I just wanted to say that, that I just appreciate you for that. Um, ain't no grave gonna hold your body down. What I'm saying, ain't nothing dead gonna hold you. And then when I met his wife, I thought, oh my God. I said, God, that is just so wonderful because I, I knew that God had replaced that part that he needed. Can we be honest this morning? Okay. And, and I was just, I was elated. I said, God, thank you for my brother. He don't know that I, well, he did, because one time he said, sister, he said, I know you're brave. <laughs> I feel you're brave, but I know all over you. You know, he has that heavy voice. I said, yeah, brother. I said, we're, we're, not, we're not Siamese twins, but, but, but there's just something about that thing about him being my brother. And he's not the son my mother had, but I know Kevin is my brother. Give him a hand, praise. <laughs> on that note, on that note, we can move on down. I told him I was not going to speak very long because everybody's waiting on the food. <laughs> so I'm going to not delay the time, but I think God is going to talk to us tonight briefly. Can we say briefly? I normally at church when I say briefly, it lasts two or three hours, but we're going to try to say briefly tonight. <laughs> So y'all pray for me. I'm looking at the clock. Is the clock right back there? Okay. So I'm going to time myself. Um, 
I thank the Lord for being here in this place tonight, and I thank God that he's going to speak to every soul that's in this place. And I think that we're in a time that we need to hear the Lord talk to us. Amen? Amen. As I get started, I know everybody realized by now that we're in a transition. And this year I am on a mission to tell you that the transition is real. And there is such a pressure on the body of Christ to be in your place. You've got to be in your place. I can't jointly fit together with you if you are not in your place. If you are not who you're supposed to be, if you are not in the place that you're supposed to be, in the time that you can be in your place, but not in the time that you're supposed to be. For the word of God says, now, now you ought to be teachers, but you have need of somebody to teach you. Which means that you're off a little bit. You know, the typewriter or the computer is an offsetting of your life. That, so, so some of us are going to have to redeem some time. And some of us are going to have to bag up because some of us did get a little ahead of God. Is that all right? And as, as Sister Rita was talking to me the other week, and I, I said, God, I'm mercy. I don't have anything to talk to Kevin about. That man is deep. And, 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 and I'm saying that he'll listen to me. You know, we listen to each other in counsel, because counsel is different than preaching. I mean, you know what I'm saying. And so, as I was talking to Sister Rena, God gave me a word. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians, and I think it's the 13th chapter. Before you say amen, I'm going to be finished. And we're going to start at the 11th. And I played with that thing, and I played with it, and I played with it, and I played with it. I said, no, I'm not Kevin, and I'm not Peggy. I'm not Juanita Bond, and I'm just a lecturer. Right. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. First Corinthians 13 chapter. And, and I thought, well, God, what are you going to say here? And I pondered, and I pondered, and I picked in my garden, and I pondered. And he said, when I was a child, yes, yes. I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. He said, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Come on, come on. And I began to think about that, and the emphasis was, but when I became a man, yes, yes, yes. this has nothing to do with agenda. This has nothing to do with my femininity. It has to do with when I became a mature human. When I rose to the occasion that I put away childish things, yeah. I stopped thinking the way I used to think. Yeah. I stopped reasoning the way I used to reason. When we were children, we accepted what the parents gave us. Yeah. Babies put, you put it in a baby's mouth, and they digest what you stick in there. Yeah. But when I became a man of four age, when my mind began to transform, and when my mind began to fund, to fumble and fumble about what I just heard, and it did not agree. So there's something about me that didn't agree with what I heard before. Yes. And my reasoning began to question, well, why this and why that? And I began to think about this one thing. Much of the scripture that we even hear has been misquoted. Yes, it has. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. Much of the scripture has been misquoted. Yes. I went to find in the scripture where they told these, what God told Ezekiel, Ezekiel, stand up on your feet and be a man. I haven't found it yet. Come on. <laughs> but you all preached that. Come on. Come on. Didn't they preach that? It's not in there. Not there. It was interjected. Yeah. It was interjected. You see, there's one revelation, many applications. And much of what we preach is application, That's right. not a revelation. But when I became a man, I began to question your interjections. Yes. And does your interjections stand the test of time of the trials that I'll go through? Because if it is real, the word of God, and if it's real, the revelation of God, it's going to stand the test of time. Yes. So when I become a man, I have a right to question what you preach to me. Right. I have a right to question what you fed me. Yeah. When I was a child, I sat down, and my mama said, if you don't eat it today, you'll eat it tomorrow. And if you don't eat it tomorrow, the next day if you get hungry, you'll eat it. And if you don't eat it then, when you get grown, you buy your own. But when I became a man, I heard the word of God say, now that you are grown, he said, go to and buy the truth and sell it not. Yes. So as a grown man, I come to tell you today, you have a right to buy the truth yes. and sell it not. Yes. Yes. Amen. Your reasoning. Yes. Many of us, have, we've, been, we've been through a lot of things. Amen. 
We've encountered a lot of life. And man has judged us according to the sea. But I heard the word of God say, but if your eye be single, you're going to see it as God saw it. You're not going to see where I am, but you're going to see destiny that's trying to be hindered by forces of hell. And you're going to speak and call destiny to the surface if you be a man. Paul goes on in another chapter. He says, put away lying, put away stealing, put away striving, put away jealousies, because these things do pertain to babies. Put away division. Put away struggling against each other. Put away backbiting. Put away fighting me with your words. Put away not looking. Put away seeing through the spirit of condemnation. He said, put it away and become a man. Put it away. Get up and walk away from that. Because the time is now that as mature saints of God, people shouldn't come in our presence and leave like they came. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? If it be that we're in the time of the spirit of Elijah, there should be some resurrected power oozing out of us. But as long as we are children, Tossed to and fro. I mean, arguing and bickering over nothing. See, when I become a man, I stand back and I choose my wars. And I recognize that you don't know what you're talking about. And I refuse to argue with you. Yes. Yes. See, I can choose my wars now. Yes. Yes. I can choose. Because children fight over anything. Can I go there? Yes. They fight over your plate to be. Your invitation is yellow and your husband's is green. And why is that? Don't they know that you two are one? Who cares? All we want to do is to read the invitation. But as children, we fight over nothing. So at what point will we become a man? At what point will we begin to think as God thinks? Yes. At what point would God be able to say through his son Jesus, I have found somewhere to lay my hand. Yes. That I can put my mind in your mind. Yes. And I can trust that you will execute the things that my mind speaks to your yes. mind. Yes. And you will not allow yours to rise to the occasion. That old man. Yes. Why? Because you're not, a, you're not a child anymore. Yes. But you've come to the place that you are a full statue. You're able to take responsibility of where you are. And listen, and you're not looking for an excuse. Yes. And you are not looking for an escape. Yes. Yes. Because I am also at an age of a mature accountability. Yes. Yes. I'm accountable now. Yes. Yes. Am, I, am, I, am, I, am I touching somebody tonight? Yes. Yes. The focus was when at the time that I used to be a child, that this moment finds me no longer a child. I am ready to step to the front of the line and take my position on earth, that I am a son of God. I'm not just a child, because a child induces and indicts the level of immaturity, that I've not come to the place to walk in my own, on my own, to execute the judgment of the house of the Lord, but I am a son. And the legacy has been given unto me now. Yes. The kingdom of God has been passed down to me. Yes. The kingdom. I didn't say my crown. I said the kingdom. The rule and the power and the authority yes. of God's kingdom has been passed down to the son. Yes. The Bible said when I was a child, I had tutors, and the world was my tutor. Come on. Did the world not teach you anything? Come on. Did you not learn anything when you were going through hell, as we call it? Come on. Learn to see things differently? Did not the spirit of the living God that helped you walk through that thing not teach you anything about life and then the other opposite side of it, the spiritual walk of God? Peter said something. The Lord told Peter. He said, Peter, come. He said, Lord, I want to. He said, I want to. He said, I see the waves moving. He said, there's trouble there. You know? Jaws might be under there somewhere moving in the door. He said, come. He said, I want to. He said, will you let me drown? He said, come. At my voice, at the commandment of my voice and my word, come. Yes. The voice of the Lord is powerful. Yes, yes. yes it is. Yes. Oh, yes. The 
voice of my God shakes the earth. Yes. It thundered. Yes. And the thunder scares my fears. Y'all didn't get that? Come on. Y'all didn't Come get on. that? The thunder of the voice of the Lord removes your fears. Yes. And what happened at that brief moment of thunder moved Peter's fear and he began to do what? Yep. Oh. <laughs> I need a drum roll. <laughs> and immediately that immature mind stood up again yeah. and it looked and it saw and it saw the waves yeah. and Peter began to go down the sons of the most high God are mature enough to take on the waves yes. Yes. and take on the undercurrents of yes. the water yes. because you are no longer a child taught to and from you had a point now you were saying that I have room uh, the Urban, the Ur, is it Ur, the Urban and the Thurman? I have the power and I have the authority. Yes. Yes. And if he speaks and the wind obeys, yes, sir. Yes. I can speak yes. and the waves will obey. Yes. Hallelujah. In two, listen, in 2009, yes. I was going through a turbulence and the Lord said to me, he said, I spoke, and the world was. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. He said, I spoke, and the Constitution, the constellations all began to obey me in the yeah. sky. Yeah. He said, I spoke, and the world was rolled over, and they began to identify by name. He said, I spoke, uh -huh. and every element that made a creation began to fall into place. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He said, my son, he said, now you speak, and you cause the waves to behave. He said, my, he didn't call me daughter. Come on, come on. He said, my son, you speak, and you cause the turbulence to stop. Why? Because you're no longer a child. Talks to and from. He said, I have placed the authority in you. In you. Yes. In you. That's why we're going through so much right now. Come on. Because we're too busy trying to maintain mm -hmm. a humanistic mind. Come on. You, we are so busy trying to hold on and deal with things as we did when we were children. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When we first got saved. Yeah. Yeah. We're still trying to hold on to the bread that was served us 30 years ago. And it has been ruined a long time ago. The penicillin is no longer any good. Right. We've got to move away from the old bread. I didn't say the living, but the whole loaf. We've got to move that loaf away and accept the new. And accept you eat the flesh of Jesus. And drink his blood, you'll never receive it. He said, I am the bread that came down out of heaven. He said, eat me. He said, drink of me. Yes. Only sons and daughters, mature people can understand that. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Mm -hmm. Until you become and realize, no, you're not, until you realize that you have no longer, the, listen, the time and the space and the energy to stay back there. You know, we don't have it. Right. That's right. We don't have it. Right. Some of us are 15, 16, 17 years old. At what time will you stand up and be a son? Let's just think about that. All right. I'm almost 60. And God forbid, I don't have the time. <coughs> Somewhere we have to change our mind. Yes. That's right. Amen. Paul said, as a child, I thought like a child. Some of us are still thinking like a child. Right. He said, as a child, I reason as a child. Everything you see, stuff, things, listen, people, things ain't what they seem. Right. Everything is not what it seems to be. Right. Everything is, can I say it again? Everything is not what it looks like. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But if your eyes be single, you'll see that. I heard a man of God say some years ago, he said, until we come to a place where we can recognize evil and a good thing and understand good and an evil thing. I want to say to you tonight, until you can come to a place that in the back of your mind, I want to talk just briefly about the mystery of iniquity. Because we've not been taught that. and We've not been, we've not been forced into a place to understand you talk about iniquity and you call it sin, but you've not come to a place to understand the mystery. Come on. 
of iniquity. It's a mystery. Because everything that looks evil is not evil. The Bible says God created it. Yes, so what you gonna do about that? Come on. <laughs> Come on. What you gonna do about that? Come on. Didn't God create it? Right. He created his own curse. So why is it that you call everything you see evil? <laughs> Satan is the author of sin. Come on. <laughs> but God is the author of evil. Whoa. Come on. Whoa, man. Come on. Whoa, man. <laughs> so you're messing with me, Sister Adnor, and I. Come on. I'm messing with the sons of Elijah. Yes. Come on. That knows how to defy gravity. Yes. That knows how to defy the brave. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so you all are still stuck on dead. <laughs> but Elijah said they ain't dead. Come on. They just look like they're dead. Come on. Jesus said the same thing. He's alive, he's not dead. Come on. All right. He sleeps. Come on. Come on. Somebody said he's stinking. It looked like you're dead to me, but Jesus said he's not dead. It's according to how you see it. Do you understand where I'm going tonight? Change your mind. And you'll see through the eyes of God, and you'll see that everything that you're looking at is not what you used to think it was. That's right. Amen. Come on. We're not going to pick at you too bad tonight, but I'm going to go a little bit further here. 1 John 3 and 2. He said, Beloved, now we are the what? Come on, talk with me. Sons of God. And what? Come on, y'all, I'm hot now. Help me preach. He said, Beloved, now at this present time, I heard somebody say that God, is it Jolene? Yes. Has summoned a group of people. And this is the message. You are sons of God. Yes, yes, yes. And it does not yet appear. But you should be. When I saw that the other day, I said, God, you said now we are the sun, but yet it doesn't appear. Come on. We are yet in a transformation. Yes. We're yet in a changing, transisting state of mind. Because until we think like God and not, wait a minute. Somebody said, when I think like God, you might think like God, but you've not come to the place where you respond like God. Come on. Yeah. When your thinking and your response line up, now yes. you are the son of God. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes. Now you'll be the son of God. Now you'll be brother. Yes. Because yeah. <laughs> most of us, when we see, Come on. and when we respond, Come on. We see God, but we act like Come on. people of unbelief. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And some of us act like sons of the Isabel. Come on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Worthless. Yes. Helpless. Come on. Mm -hmm. Wordless. Yeah. And God said, I spoke. There was a turbulence in my house two days ago, and I didn't like it. I had to choose my weapon. If I had said anything with my natural words, I would have released more forces than I needed. Yes. But I was after preserving one little bitty one. I was sitting at my computer just going at it, just going at it, just going at it. Holy Spirit quickened me. He said, get up and release the blood out of your mouth. And when I opened my mouth, I saw my mouth gush with blood. You got to have a revelation of the blood of Jesus. Yeah. When I opened my mouth, I saw the blood come out of my mouth. Uh -huh. And that force that was standing up there rattling and arguing stopped as what's going on? Uh -huh. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Right. <laughs> I had to choose my weapons. Right. That the bomb wouldn't be detonated. Uh -huh. See, a lot of things we release because we choose the wrong weapon. Right. Why? Sons know what to pull out. Skilled sons know what weapon to choose. Right. Skilled sons know what is standing in the presence of them yes. and know how that antagonistic spirit is going to react. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? When I opened my mouth, I went down the hall. I said, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And the four steward out there looked at me. I said, the blood of Jesus. What's wrong? I said, I just want all these fruit flies to fall dead. <laughs> See, a lot of times we want to argue. A lot of times we want to prove our point. I have one point to prove. That the power of the Most High God rests and abide Jesus. in the Son of God. Yeah. Give God some grace. We have authority. And we must stop acting like we are just mere children. Right. Tossed to and fro. Right. The trial that the body of Christ is in is to move you from that state of being as an immature child. Yeah. And to bring you into the statue and the state of being a son. Not more, he's the Bible said, no more talks to and fro. That we all come to the what? The unity of the knowledge of God. Yes. 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 It does not yet appear what you should be. Because you've not come to the fullness of statue yet. That's right. But one thing I do know, when the Son of the Most High God stand up in you, right. wait a minute. You see, we are believing that we're going to all look alike. When he stands up in me, he might not look like he is in you. But I promise you, in your eyes, and if your eyes are single, you're going to see Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. right. You're going to stop seeing Sister Electra. Come on. And you're going to really stop seeing my flaw. Come on. Can we go there tonight? Come on. Come on. We are so busy seeing flaws. Come on. And seeing sin. Come on. And seeing mistakes. Come on. And holding the past. So you can't see the Jesus that has been set in your midst to minister your healing. That's right. Your dose of medicine might be in this bottle, but because you don't like the bottle, you can't accept me. Well, who do you? He said, if you receive whom I said, yeah. you received me. Yeah. And so you don't want me, you don't want to be healed. Because you can't tell God who to send to minister healing. Many people believe that there are many vats of blood up there on the mercy seat. There's one mercy seat and there's one vat of blood. If you get cleansed, you're going to take a bath with me. You're going to take a bath in the same blood of Jesus. You boy, your tub ain't going to be yellow and mine be green. It's going to be one blood that's going to cleanse us all from our sins. One blood. One Lord. One faith. One baptism. Yes. And when we get that revelation, we're going to stand up and be sons. Oh, Are y'all hearing me today? Yes. When we get that revelation, we're going to stand up and be sons yes. of the Most High God. Yes. I got five minutes. <laughs> I got five minutes. I was in North Carolina one night, one year, and I'm telling you, I preached four hours, and it didn't feel like two. I asked my husband, I said, why did you let me stand up there that long? <laughs> and everybody moved, and everybody was excited. I said, okay, but don't do it again. <laughs> so I started asking for the clock myself. What am I saying tonight? It's time for you to put away challenge things. Yeah. It's time for your conversation to change. Yeah. Because a child is noted by his conversation. Yeah, that's true, his dialect shows his level of intellect. That's right. His diction shows what he's been exposed to. Right. Yes. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? His response shows his already level of maturity. Yes. Right. When you become a man in the presence of God before his people, Everybody's going to know. That you're no longer handling the word of God unskillfully. Often I tell the church, I said, there are some things in the word of God that will offend you. And if you're not careful, the revelation of it will make you backslide. Because you thought you knew God. Come on. We go into the law. Come on. And we murder people. Yeah. Am I right? We go into the law of God and we become hit man in the earth of God. Because we don't even know that it's nothing more than a time and a shadow of things to come. Is this making sense? When we sit down and take upon ourselves to stay, 
to show ourselves approved, we're going to find out more about God than we ever thought we knew. Because God is more about sin, more than sin, and killing you, and destroying you, and bashing you, and damning you. As I close, I am reminded of Jonah. Jonah was a pitiful sight of a preacher for God. God sent him into the nation to preach to Nineveh. But Jonah asked God to let me die. Because you turned around and because of the mercy that you walk in, nobody's going to believe me when I prophesy these words. I'd rather die than see this nation turn around. And as God's people, that's just about how we operate. Because that is the state of the mind of a child. I'd rather see revenge in the land than restoration in the land. Come on. Yes. Jesus. And that's what the law of God, the Old Testament works. Right. If you don't preach it by revelation, and I'll let you know it. The voice of the prophets is not like it used to be. You know why? Because we have the Spirit of God in us that has brought grace. The Bible says, you know, he says, in sundry's times and divers, sundry's and divers times, he spoke to us through the service of the prophets, but he speaks to the Holy Spirit now. Yeah. It doesn't say that the prophet's job is over. That's right. It just says that God has sent a spirit of grace and mercy and the spirit of ministry of restoration. I think in 2 Corinthians said that many of us operate under the spirit in the ministry of death. He said, if it is that we turn around and serve people, the law. Yeah. And the law served without grace and mercy brings death. That's right. And decay. Uh -huh. But Jesus Christ has died that he could bring restitution, Amen. resurrection, mm -hmm. and life. Yes, yes. But when I became a man, mm -hmm. I put away those things. Mm -hmm. I stopped acting like a child. Mm -hmm. I stopped reasoning like a child. <clears throat> and I decided I'm going to stand up and I'm going to be a man. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm going to be the servant God sent me to be. Yes. Yes. Is that Amy? Amen. Amen. Keep God's hand praising.